Hi YouTube, these are um, various images of uh, UK amphibians and reptiles. So these are common frogs in my pond, Rana Temporaria. These are some uh, common toad tadpoles. Um, the way you tell the difference between common toad tadpoles and common frog tadpoles is um, common toad tadpoles, are they tend to be blacker um, and also their tails are rounded at the end. Um, common frogs are much lighter and kind of speckled looking, sort of silvery quite often. Um, and they have very pointed tails. Okay, here's an adult female common toad. Um, their scientific name is Bufo Bufo. Um, females tend to be a lot larger and a lot fatter, um, and they tend to be more of a um, slight reddish brown colour, um, whereas males tend to be a bit greyer, um, generally anyway. Uh, this one, you can see how brilliant the camouflage is against soil. It's just absolutely perfect. Here she is again when the sun came out, and again you can see the camouflage is still great. Here I put her on some moss, and uh, you can see she stands out a little bit more now. I love common toads, and I've kept lots of them as pets over the years. And they're just much nicer captives than uh, frogs, just because they're slower moving. Um, here's one I kept as a pet, for example, and uh, here's another one. Um, the other thing is they can live for like 40 years in captivity. Um, but most of mine, like I keep them for like a year or two and then I release them um, so they can go and spawn in the wild. Um, but yeah, usually big fat female ones are great. Okay, this is a natterjack toad. The scientific name used to be Bufo calamita, but now it's Epidalia calamita. You can see how tiny this one is compared to my ring there. This is just a young toadlet, um, less than an inch long. And the way you distinguish these from common toads is they have this very obvious um, yellowish stripe down their back. Um, they're also more of a kind of a greeny colour um, with orange um, warts. Um, and another way you can tell the difference is that common toads tend to hop um, when they move, whereas these guys, they tend to run a little bit more. Um, and the name um, Bufo calamita that they used to be called actually just meant running toad. Oh, one more difference as well is that um, common toads usually have orange irises to their eyes, um, whereas natterjack toads have um, green, like a sort of silvery green iris. Um, okay, this is a slightly larger individual. I sometimes help out with a conservation group where we remove sort of um, small pine trees and birch trees um, to stop uh, woodland from forming on areas of heathland. Um, because we want to keep the heathland nice and open for these toads so that they can walk around and also like get to their breeding pools. But this photograph just demonstrates how the yellow stripe on the back, although when you see the toad like separately, um, the yellow stripe really kind of stands out. But this shows that on a bit of land like this, where you've got these kind of dry grasses, um, it actually helps their camouflage. It's really good. Um, Sometimes you can lift up a bit of rock with a toad under it and it takes you a little while to actually notice there's a toad under there. Right, this is a young common newt. Um, this used to be called Trichorus vulgaris. Um, now it's called uh, Lithotriton vulgaris. Um, and yeah, this is just a juvenile one, so this will probably be uh, just about a year, year and a half old. But when you turn these guys over, you can see the dark blotches on the belly, um, but also on the throat. You can see there's quite a few little dark blotches and also dark spots just under his chin. Whereas this is a palmate newt, and you can see the chin has got no speckles on it at all. It's completely clear of speckles. Um, so yeah, the palmate newt uh, used to be called Trichorus helveticus. Um, now it's called, uh, again, Lithotriton helveticus. This is what it looks like um, when you find it under a log. Um, they live in exactly the same places as the common newt. So yeah, when you're turning over um, logs in damp woodlands and things, you tend to come across these. Um, and I usually find it pretty tricky to tell if they're a palmate newt or a common newt unless I flip them over and look at their bellies and their throats. Okay, moving on to the reptiles. This is a slow worm, Anguis fragilis. And this is quite a young um, specimen, like when they're first born they're yellow with a um, sort of black dorsal stripe. And you can see this one has grown a little bit, um, but he's still slightly yellowish and he's still got a dorsal stripe. The dorsal stripe fades quite a bit and usually when they're adults they don't have it. 
Okay, so here's an adult specimen. Um, remember these guys are lizards and not snakes, so they've got eyelids, so they can blink. Um, snakes don't have that. Um, and also, these guys lack a forked tongue. They've got like a tongue that is just like a lizard's tongue. Um, and the reason they're called Anguis fragilis um, comes from fragile, because if you pick them up by the tail, they can drop their tail. And the tail obviously carries on wriggling about quite a bit. And um, that can be food for a bird or something, while the main um, body of the slow worm escapes. Um, and you quite often find these with like regrown tails, but they're never as um, perfect looking as they were originally. Um, this is the same one in the grass. I used to keep these a lot um, when I was a kid as pets, and you just feed them on slugs. They especially like little white slugs. Um, but I remember one time I had a pet one, and I put it in the garden just down like this on the lawn and they're really good at just disappearing and it just went into the grass and I never saw it again, it escaped really well. <laughs> Here's my wife holding a particularly dark coloured individual. Um, I remember I did a little bit of highway maintenance work for a while and um, when we used to go just on the roadsides I would find um, slow worms quite often and sometimes I would find them and they would be blue. Uh, and yeah, it, like really speckly, lots of speckles on them, but blue, which is quite unusual. But they, I looked it up, and they are like just really old male individuals. Sometimes they get this nice blue coloration. And I guess at the side of the road, they've been left alone for long enough that they can become really old. This is a particularly fat looking um, female, um, and she probably is gravid actually. These guys give birth to live young. And um, I remember turning over a plant pot in my garden and um, there was about 11 or 12 um, bright yellow little babies under there once. That was a really nice thing to find. Okay, this lizard is often called a common lizard, um, but it should probably more correctly be called the viviparous lizard. Um, so this used to be called Lacerta vivipara, um, but that's been changed to Zootoka vivipara. Um, Lacerta, um, if you think about other lizards like sand lizards, they're um, Lacerta agilis and uh, the green lizard that you find in Europe is um, Lacerta viridis. Um, and I guess they changed, the, they changed this from Lacerta because the other um, Lacertids, they lay eggs, whereas the viviparous lizard uh, is called viviparous because it um, gives birth to live young. They're basically born in like a little membrane rather than an egg and then the membrane splits and the little babies um, come out. I was quite lucky because when I was younger I used to again keep these as pets and um, I caught one one time that was a particularly um, big one and I didn't realise that at the time that it was gravid and uh, it gave birth within a couple of days and I had about I think it was eight or nine um, little babies and they're quite um, almost uh, black when they're born, very dark and we took them and we released them on a bit of heathland. Yeah, these can be quite hard to see in the wild, like this is a typical um, view of one in amongst sticks and things and very well camouflaged. Quite often you just hear a rustle and it's them disappearing and that's all you get to see, <laughs> to see a tail disappearing. Okay, this is a grass snake, uh, Natrix Natrix, um, and this is one of their main defences. So when you find them, um, they usually do one of two things. Either they do this, they feign death, um, just roll on their back. Sometimes they writhe about a bit, but sometimes they stay dead still, as if they are completely dead. The other thing they'll do is uh, just release their bowels all over you. And these guys, they feed mainly on amphibians and fish. So, uh, yeah, they're... Their um, excrement is particularly smelly. Um, I remember catching a particularly large grass snake when I was younger and taking it into college to show all my friends. And uh, just at lunchtime in the quad area, I kind of got him out to show everyone and he released his smell all over me and everybody was trying to have their lunch. So it wasn't particularly pleasant. Here's another picture of this one feigning death. So they'll often do this thing as well where they just make their um, lower jaw go all limp and floppy and it, it really is convincing like it really does look um, like a dead snake 
Okay, so the way you tell the difference between this and an adder, I mean, it's really obvious to me, and it should be to everybody, I think, that lives in this country, really. They're so completely different. So um, you can see, like, this is a typical kind of drab olive green colour. That is so typical of grass snakes. Um, and then they've got this really, really obvious um, collar behind the head, um, and vipers don't have that, um, or adders, should I say. And if you look at the pupils of the eye, I know like you're not going to be thinking about that at the time, but they these guys have got round pupils and adders have got like um, slit pupils. Um, the other thing is that adders have got a really kind of striking kind of zigzag marking all the way down their back. And they're just a sort of a shorter, stockier snake as well. The other thing is, of course, that these guys like to eat fish and frogs. So they're usually found not far from ponds. Uh, in wetter locations and um, they also lay their eggs in compost heaps so if you found a snake in your compost heap chances are it's a grass snake um, and if you find a snake in a wet area chances are it's a grass snake uh, if you find a snake on a sunnier kind of drier bit of heathland it's more likely to be an adder or very rarely a smooth snake Okay, I'm planning on doing like some UK herping videos, so if ever I see anything when I'm out and about, I'll try and video it, um, because I see things all the time, but I always forget to kind of photograph them or video them. Um, so yeah, look out for those in the future, um, and hit subscribe to see uh, anything else that I post from now on. Thanks for watching.